This is a new Kia EV9, and it's a little bit like Adidas's new range of walking boots. Ultimately, they're supposed to be practical, comfy, and user-friendly, yet it's also very, very stylish. Now, in this video, I'm gonna explain exactly what's good about this car by talking around the exterior, showing the interior. Almost like a little trampoline for your head, look. Try and answer a bit of technology. Come on, it's okay. Good Kia. And seeing how practical it is. I'll also reveal some of the things that aren't so good about it. Got a big, dirty, blooming raindrop on it. Obviously, I'll take it for a drive. Yeah, it's braking. And it's warning me. <laughs> and launch it to see how quick it is from 0 to 60 miles an hour. That's quicker than my Porsche 911 996. I'm Matt Watson, and you're watching Car Wow. Let's have a look at the design of the Kia EV9. I'm a poet and I actually know it. You know, for a family-friendly seven-seater electric SUV, it actually looks pretty good. To be fair, the rear isn't its best angle, but it's not offensive. And depending on which model you go for, you have a slightly different lower bumper design. So the entry-level air looks slightly different to this GT line and GT line S versions. You do have this big roof spoiler there to try and make it look sporty. And the way these lights are like that kind of remind me a little bit of a Volvo. Moving down the side, now this is where it starts to look really good. These kind of blocky, chunky wheel arches sort of give it a cyberpunky vibe, as do the wheel designs. So the entry-level car starts off on 19s, but you can upgrade to 20s. If you have a GT Line or a GT Line S, then you have these 21-inch alloy wheels. Also, the GT Line and GT Line S have black window surrounds and black roof bars, whereas the Air has silvery ones. Obviously, we've got some blacked-out rear windows to make it look mean. And the obligatory for an electric car. Come on, let's do it. Retractable door handles. Moving down the side, look, the doors do cover the sills, which is good. Can you see? But don't look too much inside. We'll come to that in a moment. So GT Line, GT Line S have black door mirrors, body coloured on entry level air. Once again, here at the front, very chunky, very squared off, very cyberpunky. Love it. And the lights at the front sort of have a similar -ish -y shape to those at the rear. So moving across the front, very chunky, very bulky, very bold, but also very square and cool looking. I think it does help with this blue paint, though this car doesn't come cheap. Maybe called a Kia, but Kia has gone up in the world and so have their prices. So the starting price of this car, £65,000. This one is a little more expensive because it's the range topper. It's £77,000 for a Kia. Is it worth it? We're going to find out. The interior of this EV9 is rather nice. It's quite simplistic, but has various contours and elements to it. So it's interesting at the same time. Got this big digital driver's display, which you control most of the features through. It's reasonably responsive. As you can see there, the graphics are a bit dark. Now you've probably noticed over here, look, we've got our climate control here, and it's slightly blocked by the steering wheel. So you do have to look around like that when you're driving to see what's going on. Though fortunately, you do have some shortcut buttons here for the temperature and the fan speed, which is handy, and that's what you're gonna be using while you're driving. Also, you've got some shortcut buttons there, which are haptic feedback, touch sensitive thing is, to just zip around through the different menus, but more on those later. In terms of the quality, it's generally pretty good, but as you go lower, it becomes less good, and like lower down here, less good, up here nice and squidgy, but less good, better. You know what? This particular car, range topper, is quite expensive. It's similar money to a BMW iX, and the BMW does feel like a more luxurious product in terms of the material quality. And if you want to see my full in-depth video review of that car, just click on the pop-out banner up there or follow the QR code appearing on the screen right now. Having said that, though, these seats are absolutely lovely, and I like the headrest. They're sort of like, almost like a little trampoline for your head, look. <laughs> it's quite a cool design. Quite like the design of the steering wheel as well. These indicators, they just feel kind of nicely damped. Seating position, it's adjustable electrically. The steering wheel and of course the driving seat. Oh, and there's enough adjustment with your big or small, you'll be able to get comfy and get a good view out. Right, storage. In here, there's a little bit of storage. That's your wireless charging there for your mobile phone, which kind of has it away under there. You have some cup holders under here. Look, there we go. Depends what size of items you want to keep in there. So you could use it just for storage in there or for your cup holders. Let's see if that fit. Big bottles, yeah, that is good. There's more storage in this bin under there. Can you see that? Then down here, you've got your USB. So USB's there. You've got another USB there. And look, that's your 12 volt in there, all neatly packaged. In here, you have 
a glove drawer, I like to call it, rather than a glove box. And that is big as well. Look, that's quite deep, very practical, very useful. But let's quickly do the test of the door bins. Can it hold a big bottle? Oh, yes, it can. Another thing to show you is this, look. Massive, massive sun visors, really good for blocking out the sun. And the biggest vanity mirror I've seen on any car, which is perfect for the vein. Ooh. That feels nice, actually. Hmm, soft, smooth headlining. Oh, it's quite a nice place to be, this. Oh, there is one last thing I just want to show you. I quite like it. So when you turn the car off, it makes this noise. The Kia EV9 comes with seven seats as standard, but you can pay an extra thousand pounds for this six-seater arrangement with these two individual chairs rather than a bench in the middle row. And then you have a bit more functionality, such as, look, comfy armrests and you can recline these seats individually like that look oh so that's really really comfy and you can slide them forwards and backwards you can also do this with them if i open this door pull a lever in here i can do this i can rotate it right up, up, up. right there we go i'm not entirely sure why you do this because uh, <laughs> there's not much you can do in this position look because these are the seats get in the way. You can do it if you really want to. Let's put this back. Come on, where's the lever? Uh, right. The car's beeping at me for some reason. It's probably because I've got the accessories on so I can show you things like this. Look, the rear windows, they go all the way down, which is good news. And you have look, some blinds if you want to use those. You also have on the top spec version, the GT Line S, sunroof now in the front the blind is manual but in the rear it's electric unfortunately you can't operate it from back here so you have to ask the driver to help you out but it is very nice having this sunroof it's just a shame you can't get it on the lower trim levels it's very roomy though isn't it but loads of headroom and obviously in this configuration lots of shoulder room as well it's quite practical here we've got two cup holders there that's quite handy because this will not fit in the door bin See, what will fit is just your normal size bottle. You also have some pockets on the seat backs. They're like airplane style folders, feel quite expensive. Then you have this drawer system here. So you pull this out, push that back. Though this top bit here, look, this actually extends further for some reason. I don't know why that is, it just is. We've got some climate control there. So you have climate control here in the middle row. Put your air vents up there as well, your reading lights, your hooks, all your bits and pieces. And the quality back here is pretty much identical to in the front. So you don't feel like you're in the cheap seats. In fact, these feel very luxurious. I would definitely go for this six seater configuration. I just like it. Anyway, let's check out the space in the very back. So if I press a button up on here, uh, I can slide this forward. Oh, I better clean this dirt that I put on the seat, just clean that off. Oh, no. Sorry, we have to clean this out afterwards. <laughs> now, when I pull this back, there we go, let's get into position. I'm gonna get this into a position that's just about right for me. James, can you come and sit in here and get yourself comfortable? I'm gonna move this one out of the way so you can see what's going on. Got my beautiful assistant to help me here. So can you just get yourself comfortable so you've got enough knee room? And we'll see if I'm okay. So look, you all right there, James? So James is all right. Look, I've got enough knee room. I can sort of shuffle my feet underneath the chair in front. And the good thing about this six seater version is I can put my other foot there. And actually, because the seat base is quite high from the floor, I don't feel like I've got my knees up around my ears like you do in the back of some other SUVs. And headroom back here is good as well. It's actually fine for adults here in the very back. There's cup holders there as well as a USB-C. Yeah, it's all pretty good. I want to show you this though, right? One of the things I particularly like about this car here in the rear is, what is it? Ah, yeah, <laughs> just I drew a complete blank. Look down here. I fix anchor points here in the third row, as well as, oh, there's also Isofix down here. There is something else I need to show you as well. Look, see these buttons? I can use these to alter the backrest in this third row. And look how far back you can make it go. So it is really surprisingly comfy. I am so impressed. 
It's actually comfy in the back seats. Now let's check out the boot. So, with all rows of chairs in place, you have 330 litres of load space. Now, to give you an idea how big that is, it's about the same that a Volkswagen Polo has. So that's quite good with these rear chairs in place. As you can see, there's no load lift. As there's hardly any light bumper protruding, it's quite easy to then slide things in and out. That is really good. And if you look under here, you'll see that there is a place to store the load cover. I like that too. Now you do have some of the features back here. Look, you've got a 12 volt socket there and you've got some hooky things there. What I'm gonna do now though is lower these rear seats. There we go. Now with the rear seats lowered, you have 830 litres of space, which is pretty good. However, a Tesla Model X does have more overall load space. And if you click on the pop-out banner up there in the top right-hand corner of the screen, or follow the QR code, which should be appearing on the TV screen right now, you can see my video review of that car. If you look here, the load space is completely flat, which is really, really good. If I press these buttons, I can fold those down. And I really wish we had just moved that driver's seat forward a bit because that would have been seamless. But unfortunately, we didn't. So I'm going to have to do this. Looks like the cameraman was as confused as I was as to where to go there. <laughs> Sorry about that. Anyway, let's see how much space there is under the bonnet. If you have the rear wheel drive version of this car, you have 90 litres of boot space underneath the bonnet. However, if you have the four wheel drive version, because there's a motor under there, it eats into the space and then you only have 50 litres. Now, if you compare that to a Tesla Model X, which regardless of which version you have, you have 180 litres of load space in the fruit. Yeah, this Kia is a little bit off the mark. And that brings you up to five annoying things about the EV9. I find the infotainment screen a little bit too far away. And so you have to reach to touch it. So you end up steadying your hand on this ridge here, and then you accidentally trigger the shortcut button. So you're a bit like that. You want to press something and then, oh, it's gone onto another screen. Let's just press that then, okay. There we go. Oh no, it's gone onto another screen again. No, 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 it's annoying. On some cars, the middle seats, when they slide forward to give access to the rear, have a memory function, so they go back to where you actually had them positioned, but not on this car, so you go like that, you push it to get in, and then when you pull it back, will it go and stop at the exact same position? No, it's come all the way back here now. So I'm gonna have to get someone to adjust it for me. You would think that a car such as this with so much technology would have a rear view camera with a little washer on it to keep it clean. However, it doesn't. And the camera's mounted so low that it does get covered in road grime. So you're often having to pop out and wipe it clean with your thumb so you can actually see what's behind you. This car has a lot of safety systems, which is good, but it always defaults to having the lane assist and warning and the speed limit warning on. So you have to turn them off if you want to disable them because they're annoying you. And to do that, it's quite a few steps. So you have to go into setup. Let's go to vehicle. Let's go to driver assistance. Let's go to speed limit. Turn that off. Let's turn that off. And then let's go back and turn off the lane keeping shenanigans. Turn it off. So I'm all set up exactly as I want the car. However, if I get out, turn it off and start it again, those two features will default to being on again. So I have to go through the whole procedure and usually you don't figure that out until you've already pulled away. So you're doing that while driving, which isn't safe. That is a problem that you get with quite a lot of cars these days. However, this Kia has something special down here. Look, that is a fingerprint reading sensor. So you can configure the car to exactly as you like it and you touch this and it will restore it to your settings like the seat position and stuff like that. However, this is not linked to the safety systems. So I can understand why they default to on because you might have someone else that gets into the car and so it's better to have the safety systems on. But if you have your fingerprint, you touch it, you're basically saying, I want it set up as I want this car set up. Please set everything up, including the safety. It's a missed opportunity. When you're just creeping forward in traffic on the brakes, they make a strange graunching sound. Have a listen. Hear that? Come on, do it again. Hear that? Doesn't sound very expensive, does it? It's not all bad though, because actually if you look, go and have a look inside. There is no one driving the car. <laughs> I'm actually driving this car by remote control using the key fob. Come towards me, don't be shy. I'll forgive you of that noise because this is kind of cool. Come on, keep coming. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Don't be shy, come on. Come on this way, come on. Come on, it's okay. Come on. There, good Kia. 
you can get this car with some very cool seats. First up is the Ergo Motion seat. So as well as the usual heated and cool function and a massage, it has something called comfortable stretch. So when you're on a long journey, it'll run a program to help stretch the muscles in your back to reduce fatigue. There's also posture assist, which will help improve your posture while you're driving and a lumbar stabilization system, which alters the amount of lumbar support you have. So it doesn't put too much pressure on your lower spine if you're in the seat for a long time, but that's not all. You can operate the front passenger seat from this row to give yourself a bit more knee room if the person in front just hopped out and didn't reset their seat. And you just use these buttons here to alter the reclining function and move it forwards and backwards. Now it could become problematic if you've got naughty children and they like mess about with that while you're just in front of them, but still useful to have. What's more, these two seats here in the middle row are heated and cooled as well. Another function is the relaxation mode. So if I press this button here, it's going to move this front passenger seat into the ideal position for just relaxing. There's even this little under calf support there to lift my legs up. Ah, that is a very nice position. I think it's perfect for your posture. You'll also do it on the driver's seat as well, but it doesn't seem to lift this part because then obviously you wouldn't be able to operate the pedals and that would be dangerous. There is one more thing though. I can fold down the third row of seats through the infotainment screen just by pressing these buttons. There we go. That's handy if you've just taken the kids to school, they've jumped out, they haven't put the seats back up, and now you need to chuck some stuff in the boot. Then obviously once you've done your errands and you need to pick the kids back up again, you can just press the buttons and they'll go back up. Though it's not perfect, you'll see that the headrests don't actually go back up as well. But I suppose that's not too hard for the kids to put back up as they climb in the back. So long as you have the key in your pocket, let's say you hop out, You've gone shopping, you've picked up some stuff, you've got full hands. You want the tailgate to open automatically, don't you? And you do get this feature on lots of cars. You end up swiping your foot underneath the bumper and it opens sometimes and sometimes it doesn't. It's a real faff. With this Kia though, all I have to do is stand close to the boot like that. And it knows I want to get in it. Move away and it opens. No messing about. And it always works, which is a winner. If you get a four wheel drive version of the EV9, it comes with terrain mode. So you can cycle through different settings and it adjusts the traction control to keep moving on snow, mud or sand. There's also hill descent control to help take you down a steep slope safely. And for an electric car, this four wheel drive version has impressive towing capabilities. It's 2,500 maximum towing capability, which is the same as a BMW iX and about as good as it gets in the electric world right now. This car comes with a three pin socket. Now you can get other cars with a three pin socket and they'll be able to charge your laptop. However, this one has 250 volts and 16 amps, which means, look at this. <laughs> Fail. You can actually boil a kettle with it. Boiling. <laughs> it's boiled kettle of water. That's rather wasteful. You can get two different power outputs of the Kia EV9. The entry level air car has a single electric motor driving the rear wheels with 203 horsepower. Then the GT line versions have four wheel drive, so a motor on each axle and a combined 385 horsepower. Also, when it comes to range, that rear wheel drive car has a slightly better range. Even though both cars have a 100 kilowatt hour battery, the rear wheel drive car will do 350 miles on a full charge, whereas the four wheel drive versions do 350 miles on a full charge. In terms of charge, Charging them, you have 210 kilowatt charging capability on DC and also 11 kilowatt charging on AC. Right, let's see what this EV9 is like to drive. And I'm going to start off in town. Just general car-y stuff to begin with. Driving position is great. Sit nice and high. You have got a big square bonnet, but it's easy to tell where the corners are. If you're at the back window, it's good considering how far away that window is. The steering is nice and light for town work. The brakes. They're not overly grabby like they can be in some electric cars, though you do find they're a little bit inconsistent. So you press them and it's quite smooth, and all of a sudden you reach a point where they really slam on the anchors. It's like they've got a sort of exponential thing going on with them. In terms of the suspension, I'm very impressed with this car. It's super 
super comfortable. Now, if you back to back this car with something like a high-end Mercedes SUV, which has air suspension, this doesn't have that, those do feel a little bit posher the way they go down the road, but that's just for motoring journalists to worry about. This car is very comfy. It's just on really finer surfaces. It does fidget a little bit like a really posh Mercedes won't. Anyhow, let's check out the turning circle. I'm gonna enlist the help of the surround view cameras so I can see what's going on. Got a big dirty blooming raindrop on it. Turning circle, 12.3 meters, which is actually quite large for a car such as this. By comparison, the VW ID Buzz has a turning circle of 11 meters. Now click on the pop-out banner up there to watch my funny video review of that car. But thankfully the cameras saw me around there okay and I could see where the curb was. So I didn't worry about curbing my wheels. Hopefully I'll make this curb. And I've got to point this out, really love that feature. The fact that which way you indicate, it shows you what's happening in the camera, which is on each door mirror, really good. So you can check out your blind spot visually when you're making maneuvers. This car is so packed full of tech. We've got a bit more tech for you coming up actually. Let's get out of here, get on my way. You can use these paddles to change the amount of regen effect when you lift off the accelerator. There's two modes, there's normal mode, and you can put that into fully manual and run on full one pedal driving. So when you lift off the brake, it will bring it down to a complete standstill, or you can back it off so it's much more gentle, the regen slowing effect. However, what I do is put it into auto mode, and then what the car will do is use its radar, which it uses in the adaptive cruise control, to actually work out how far you are from the car in front. So now what I'm gonna do is actually back off the regen effect and go towards the car in front, and it's actually slowing me down using regen because it's measuring that distance it is brilliant. Here's something else that's brilliant. Look, car in front of me, stopped at the lights, put my indicator on. I'm going to let it pull away. Imagine I'm daydreaming or chatting. You know, when you're at a junction and the person in front, they're clearly not paying attention. Those kind of lights which are just on green for a shortest period. Watch this. Oh, I'm just daydreaming. I'm getting a little warning then. That beep said, leading vehicle is driving on. It has warned me that the car in front has driven off and I haven't. I think every car should have that. That's brilliant. Clever, clever, clever. Okay, now I'm gonna show you the benefit of the auto regen braking. You are more efficient if you have regen braking actually off and the car is coasting because you're not losing energy while regen braking because as well as like putting it back into the battery, there are losses. So you're better to just coast. That's the best thing to do, but obviously you don't wanna coast into the car in front of you. So I'm accelerating now, I'm lifting off and it's regen braking automatically for that car because I got close to it. I wonder what it'll make of this broken down car here. Yeah, it's braking and it's warning me. <laughs> and it did emergency steering then to steer around it. It's got everything, this car. Anyway, back to the demonstration. So I'm now lifting off the accelerator and the car in front is quite a way away. So it's not giving me much regen braking. But if I get close to him, like this, look, you can see it. It's regening auto, much more regen braking because I'm close to the car. And it even gave me a warning because I was getting too close to it. That's the thing about Kias, you know, they are packed full of kit and you get it as standard depending on which trim level you go for. It's not like the German things where, you know, you pay for a top spec car and you have to add so many more things to it. BMWs don't even get adaptive cruise control as standard. This has it. Look, I'm just going to engage it now. Here we go. There we go. With lane keeping assist, increase the speed to 50. That's what it is here. Look, I'll turn around here. Oh, look, stare. And I'm getting all the visuals in that heads up display. Oh, look, the car in front's pulling over. What's it going to do? It's slowing down. I'm going to follow him in. What will happen? Oh, 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 look, look, it's automatically stopping. There we go. Look, my, I wasn't touching any of the pedals. And of course, when he pulls away, I'll let me know that he's pulled away and I should get on the move too. I'm actually waiting while Lewis cleans the camera lenses. It's a rubbish day today, look at it. Yesterday it was nice, sunny. Tomorrow's nice and sunny. But today, the day that we're filming, it is raining. I want to move to California. Is there anyone in America who'd like to marry me? Okay, let's test the performance. So cruising along at 40. Let's see how long it takes to get to 70. Three, two, one, go. 70. It's 
that's quick enough, isn't it? Not bad considering this thing weighs 2.6 tonnes. That pickup was impressive. Now, cruising along at 70, there's a couple of things I can notice. One, there's not much road noise. Two, there is a little bit of wind noise from around here. Probably the big door mirrors. But at speed, it feels fairly planted, comfy. Little bit of fidget coming through from the rough surface, which you wouldn't be getting if you had a luxury German SUV with air suspension. But it's, it's just a tiny, tiny you know, complaint. This car, for most people, they're going to find it super comfy. Will they find it efficient enough, though? This one's averaging 2.3 miles per kilowatt hour. And when you consider that it's got a 100 kilowatt hour battery, that means the real world range in this car, what I'm achieving right now, 230 miles. It's supposed to do 313 miles on a full charge. So that's a little less than 75% of the claimed range. All right, I'm going to check out the handling now. So I'm going to put the car into sport mode. Also, the seat's gripping my body a little bit firmer. Let's give me a hug. Set it on. It's added a bit of weight to the steering. It doesn't do anything to the suspension, but it does make the throttle response a bit more zippy. Maybe I should have done that 40 to 70 test in this mode. Feels a bit quicker, so quick that I got too close to the car in front and it told me off again. One thing to note is that while the steering feels nice and light in town, which is good, even in sports mode, while it has a bit more weight, what I find is it's a little bit unnatural. So what you want from a car is the more you turn the steering wheel, the more the steering wheel weights up as load goes through the tyres. But in this, it doesn't seem to. It just seems the same kind of resistance wherever you are, regardless of what you're doing. However, the steering does put the car exactly where you want it to go. And considering this thing is heavy and big, it actually goes around corners really, really well. I think the only issue I have with it is the fact you can't really tell how much grip you've got with those front tires, but it will easily do the speed limit on a twisty road such as this completely unfazed, which is all you can really ask for, isn't it? It handles better than I thought it would. I'm quite impressed. It's actually a really good car to drive. I like it very muchly. Anyway. One last thing to test. Kia says this four-wheel drive version of the EV9 will do 0 to 60 in 5.3 seconds. Specialist Tommy Gear is prepped and ready. Let's go on to auto hold and then, oh no, that's not auto hold. Let's go on to auto hold, it's engaged now, and floor it. See what time we can get on this horrible, miserable, wet day. It's going for it. stops really well as well that's a sub five second time in a massive kia electric suv that's quicker than my porsche 911 996 bonkers and rather brilliant so then what's my final verdict on the kia ev9 should you avoid it consider it shortlist it or just go right ahead and buy it. Well, I reckon you should just go right ahead and buy the EV9 if you're after a stylish, well-equipped and very, very practical electric SUV. Hey, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. It really helps us out. And let me know what you think of my verdict on this car in the comments below. If you click on the video windows, you can watch some more videos. Thanks for watching.